Iron River send the pen ambassadors on a fishing trip and this year they decided to send the guys to Mozambique. The area where they went to was an area called Baboon Point Lodge. It's a remote area where there's still a lot of fish and a lot of our ambassadors haven't been to Mozambique before so for them this was a trip of a lifetime. Right so the guys that joined us on the trip was Dexter Grucock from Iron River. Dexter is our marketing stroke product development manager. The ambassadors were Ibrahim Dean, Charles Marais from the Cape, AJ from Stillby, Gerard Gesse from Jeffreys Bay, and Jerome Charles from KZN. So it was a nice bunch of guys, all keen anglers, and the excitement levels were very high. Alright, so as it is with these trips, we had a whole bunch of lures and all different things we had to try and test. So I had to take the guys to an area where I thought the best would be to catch a different variety of species. So just to the north of the lodge is an area where there's a lot of scattered reef. So you basically have the beach, a bit of a trough, and then some reef at the back. And on the other side of the reef, you're sand again. And often the GTs or your kingfish species like to patrol those reefs. Um, they'll, they'll shoot through the reef, dart through them, grab some bait fish. Um, they'll also sit behind the reef and wait for the bait fish to come past in a wave and grab them. So that's the area we started off with casting lures towards the reef, um, either side of the reef, over the reef and working it back in, to see if we can get a strike. Alright so Dexter, his background is bass fishing. I think the biggest fish he ever caught on a lure must have been four or five kilos. So for him to catch a decent fish um, on a lure would be very exciting. We all watched Dexter in anticipation of actually hooking a big fish to see how this bass angler is going to handle the good fish. So Dexter was fishing with a black bucktail. He just liked the lure and he, he kept on saying to us, I'm going to catch a decent fish on this. And eventually casted the lure out and hooked into a decent fish. And I think that poor bass angler got the biggest fright of his life when the GT grabbed that bucktail. At Baboon Point Fishing Lodge, we've been we've walked quite away from from camp to come do the morning session. We let some of the guys go. They, we passed them. Walk, we came walking past them, left them. I walked up the beach and dolphin myself. Saw a couple of the fish smashing. Grabbed my bucktail. First cast, two pops, and it was just on. The fish grabbed me and he took off. Man. So I've got, I've got the new Fusion bucktail on here, uh, one ounce in black colour. I was chatting to, to Rudolph last night about the recent fishing in that and he seems to have been, he seems to have had a bit of success on the black. So you know, all the guys were tying on the, the conventional colours, your pink, your chartreuse. So I decided just to keep it a little bit different, stuck with the black and gone fuss.
All right, so Dolph Skippers, my fellow guide, was out there to help Dex with his fish. Um, obviously, these big GTs, we don't want to get them out of the water long, so you want to get into the water, grab the fish, quickly measure it, take a few photos, and get back in the water. So Dolph did a great job there, helping Dex to get the photos taken and get the fish back into the water. Oh, man! This is what we've come to Baboon Point for, to catch monster GTs like this. What an absolute rush. He grabbed that bucktail of mine and he screamed off. And while I'm speaking here, shoal has gone on as well. There seems to be a good couple of these fish around, but man, oh, look at this fish. Well, after the initial shock of hooking the fish, Dexter actually fought the fish very well. Um, he, he, he managed to get up on the hill a bit, just get higher in order to get his braid off the reef so he doesn't get cut off. Dolph coached him a bit and I must say he did a very good job landing the fish. He was very happy. That's obviously the, the GT of a lifetime for him and a fish of a lifetime. So he was one happy man after he released that fish. Alright, so an angler like Shoal Marie is from Cape Town and never fished this area before. Wanted to come up and just catch different species. He wasn't too worried about catching big fish. Obviously he'd be happy catching a big fish. But his aim for the week was to get as many new species on his list that he hasn't caught before. So Shoal decided to go with the Sibyl fast cast lure and that opened the door for a lot of species. Yeah, just got a green spot on a Sibyl. What are you going to do this one? Uh, I think AJ says he's going to swim it for live bait. When Shoal landed the green spot, AJ was standing there ready with his swim bait trace to target a big GT or maybe a blackfin shark. So he grabbed that little green spot, pinned it and swam it at his live bait. So why would AJ want to swim this live bait and not slide it? First, it was quite a big green spot. So by sliding it, that bigger green spot might have picked up the slide sinker and moved it around. It would have been very difficult to slide. So swimming a bigger green spot like that is a much better option. Um, obviously, the bigger the bait, the bigger the fish. And that opens the door for big GT up to 40, 50 kilos. So that was AJ's first idea was to hook a big GT. His second prize would have been a nice blackfin. We know that blackfin loves a swim bait. And if you're not going to hook a GT, 9 out of 10 times, that blackfin's going to pick you up. The unfortunate thing about swim baits is that your strike rate is very low. It's not easy to hook fish on the swim bait, so you need patience and you've got to persist with it until you eventually hook a fish on your swim bait rig. I'm getting a bite on the swim bait. <laughs> AJ did everything right, fish picked him up, he let it run, it stopped once and on the second run he tightened up on the fish, we actually thought the fish was on, but unfortunately it missed the hooks. Um, as he started to retrieve back, I could see there's still weight on, on his hook and I said to him there's probably another piece of fish left on there, and just leave it and often that shark will eat that first piece of fish he grabbed and come back for the piece that's left and that's exactly what happened. AJ left that, that piece of meat on his hook and a few minutes later the shark came back. Ha 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 ha!
the unfortunate thing about swim baits is that your strike rate is very low. It's not easy to hook fish on the swim bait. So you need patience and you've got to persist with it till you eventually hook a fish on your swim bait rig. That was a big shot. If you can look at those teeth marks there, it was a big shot. But swim baiting is not an easy game and your strike rate is very low on swim baits. For one second we thought we had him on, but uh, a blackfin is another fish too. He's got a few tricks in the air and he throws the bait. That's our ambassador from KZN, Jerome Charles, who's new to our team, was one of those keen anglers and made a million casts with a Sabil stick shed looking for a GT. Um, I was throwing the Seabile uh, stick shed, then on the second twitch, on. Such a nice feeling, yeah? This one has followed looked on the side using the uh, uh, stick shed. You can use it at Libe for a big GT. Well, Ibrahim Dean from the Cape as well was also enjoying this new experience for him and he's using this Seville fast cast and also landed in a nice green spot. Alright, okay. Green spot, but it's a build fast cast. Well, Ibrahim is a very experienced angler and has been in the game for very long, but he doesn't often get the opportunity to spin and fish for fish the, the way we do in Mozambique. So for him, it was a very nice and exciting experience, and he was able to learn from the guys who's been doing it for many, many years. Alright, so when you target these GTs, there's always a certain period of the day that works well. Uh, um, we often say early morning and late afternoon and then the turn of the tide. But if you can be lucky enough to have that turn of the tide and late afternoon, 3, 4 o'clock as the sun starts going down, that is most probably the best time to target a GT on live bait or even using lures. So Jerome had his live bait out. He sat on it for a long time. Uh, at one stage, you actually want to reel in with him. No, Jerome, just wait. It's heading towards that late afternoon time. The sun's going to drop behind the hill. And as soon as that shadow comes over the sea, those big jeets move in and they start feeding. And that's exactly what happened. As that shadow moved across the water, Jerome had a decent bite and went on. Uh, put out a live bait and it's got pulled. What do you think it is? Seems to be a nice fish, eh? Hoping for a GT. My Pen Battalion Shark and my Fathom 40. Awesome setup. Light and it can pull, eh? Right, 
Right, and the area where Jerome had the bite was a very foul area. A lot of big scattered reef in the water full of sharp barnacles and, and oysters. So the first thing Jerome did when he had the bite was actually run up the dune to get some height. Um, it, it was a very clever thing to do. He kept his line up and just made sure that only his trace, which was a nylon coat that steel trace, was in the water with his metal snoot. So that gave him the opportunity to fight the fish comfortably, keep the line off the reef and make sure he lands his fish. Charles, always being the guy that wants to help and is um, there to assist his fellow anglers, was standing waist deep in the water, waiting for the GT to grab it for Jerome. I don't think Charles ever grabbed the GT in his life, so I think he was a bit nervous when he eventually had it, but he did a great job, grabbed the GT, got it first time, and carried it out to the beach to take some photos. Um, put a live bait out, hoping for a big GT, and look like we got it. <laughs> I can't stop smiling, eh? Monster. <laughs> All right, so for Jerome, it was a life changing experience. For many, many years, he's targeted GTs along the KZN coastline. He's had a few in the 20 kilo marks, but this was his personal best, and he was one ecstatic man after landing that nice GT. Right guys, so that's the end of our first session of the tour. Some guys got their personal best, some good fish are hooked, some good fish were lost, the excitement levels were up, and it was leading up to an awesome week in Mozambique.